Eugen, I have been focusing on the nature of consciousness throughout my career, starting in neuroscience and thinking about it all, all the time, about how can you get the first person experience out of a physical brain. And I followed all the philosophical arguments. And what has struck me in, in recent times is an emergence from diverse people of a real serious interest in so-called panpsychism, that the only way you can explain our first-person experience is to say that there's some little tiny element of proto-consciousness in virtually everything, so-called panpsychism. What do you think of that? Mm. So panpsychism says that all physical ultimates are conscious, or at least proto-conscious. And this is a nice view because it avoids the problem of strong emergence. So Define what that means. Okay. Suppose that we accept physicalism, then these physical ultimates are purely physical. But if we arrange them in a specific way and create the brain, for example, then suddenly consciousness is realized. But it looks miraculous. How could you get consciousness from these purely physical particles. You can get behaviors. Mm. You can get people doing things. You can get, a, you get reactions. You get very sophisticated behaviors. But how can you get that first-person awareness, that sensations that, that we have now of color and sound and meaning, where it, it, we have the internal feeling? It seems so radically different. Mm. Yeah, phenomenal properties seem completely different from physical properties that these physical ultimates have. So we need to do something. And one possible proposal is to uh, hold panpsychism. And panpsychism says that these physical particles are conscious or proto-conscious, so it's not surprising that we get consciousness when they are arranged properly. Uh, but this view faces its own problem, uh, which is called uh, the combination problem. Some people say it's the weirdness problem. It's just too weird to be true. That's right. They think that the panpsychism is possibly the most counterintuitive philosophical yeah. view. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the combination problem says as follows. So our conscious experiences seem smooth and unified and homogeneous. Yeah. When you have a visual experience, it looks perfectly smooth. It doesn't look like a collection of little bits of consciousness. So how can you derive this smooth conscious experience from little bits of conscious experience, uh, uh, proto-consciousness? Right, right. So that's the combination problem. And now, in order to solve this problem, I am trying to develop a new view called cosmic panpsychism. According to this view... It doesn't view, surprise me at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is another uh, very unusual view, uh, but I think it solves the combination problem. According to cosmic panpsychism, the whole universe is conscious. And uh, consciousness of the universe, which you might call the cosmic consciousness, is more fundamental than our conscious experiences. So our conscious experiences are segments of the cosmic consciousness. And so in that case, at least to solve the, the, um, the continuity problem, mm. it would be easier because rather than consciousness being built up out of trillions of tiny small bits, mm. which would give you potential fragmentation, your just taking a piece of this bigger cosmic consciousness, so it by itself is a unity. Is that the idea? That's right. So imagine a painting, which is very smooth, perfectly smooth painting. Mm. And it's very difficult to uh, draw this painting with little dots. Mm. That's impossible. But imagine that you have a bigger painting, much bigger painting, and you can just segment this painting and make a smaller painting that is perfectly right. smooth and continuous. Right. So that's the basic idea. The, uh, the baggage that you bring along with that idea, it solves one problem but creates another. Uh, because now you got something called uh, cosmic consciousness. Now, is that consciousness? Is, is, is this, is, is, does that have a, uh, its own first-person experience? That's something we don't know, and we can only speculate. One possibility is that cosmic consciousness is not similar to our consciousness. So maybe there is no agent that owns the cosmic consciousness. There are two views of cosmic consciousness. One would say that it is, it is primordial, it's primitive, and, and ours is sort of derivative 
of that in some way. The other one says that there is a cosmic consciousness, but it's really just the, the collection of all of the individual consciousness kind of uh, combined together, creating something of a greater whole. Mm. Uh, but what uh, uh, cosmic panpsychism says is that uh, the cosmic consciousness is more fundamental than our yes. conscious experiences. Right. So it's not that the cosmic consciousness is just a collection of okay. smaller right. consciousnesses. Because yeah. if we accept that, then cosmic panpsychism also faces the combination problem in a bigger scale. Yeah. Uh, some people may confuse panpsychism, or, or particularly cosmic panpsychism, with pantheism. That mm -hmm. says that God is everything. Now you have consciousness being everything. How do the, the two articulate together, or are totally different? It is possible to uh, combine these two views, pan. Uh, pan Entheism on the one hand and pan, uh, cosmic panpsychism on the <laughs> other. So you might think that the cosmic consciousness represents God's mind or yeah. God's consciousness and the physical universe that realizes the cosmic consciousness, God's body. Then you can get panentheism because panentheism says that uh, the physical universe is God's uh, par uh, proper part and there's something beyond that, which might be the cosmic consciousness.